Okay, Luke, we're gonna get started here with the disassembly process. Sorry for the background noise. My son is filling filling the pool outside, having camp camp at home. I want to take a very close look at your um, at your balance here, just to be 100% sure that we're doing okay with no wobble. Dirt and crud. Um, overall, looks looks pretty good. Um, got some hairs and other things that have gotten gotten in over time, and we'll take care of that. And get all that cleaned up. The spring seems to be hmm, perhaps a different style than what originally came on this watch, but. Uh, Looks okay. Looks fine. All right. Let's get your pushers out. I definitely need some new waterproofing. <laughs> Looks like they have dried up pretty badly. That's uh, that's fairly typical. This spring seems to have. Ugh lodged itself in there and it's pretty rusty um, what I'm hoping is that there's no residual but um, that spring needs to definitely be replaced as it is not correct for this particular watch as is you can see it's very different in fact I'm not sure either of these are stock material, but we'll take a close look. Certainly that one's not long enough. Okay. Go ahead and take out your stem. And your winding stem. We'll get you a new seal on there as well. Okay. Very nice. I love that brown dial. <laughs> it's so cool. So much character. <laughs> Such a great looking watch.
nothing too bad. All right, let's get your dial removed. One thing I did want to check, just for your clarity on things, as your watch stands at the moment, we know that this is a 1977, February of 77 watch, so if they were still putting marks, and I'm pretty sure they were on the backs of dials, this should be from somewhere around March perhaps of 77 for the original dial. So let's see what the back of the dial reveals. Okay, December 6. Hmm. So a little bit different than what I was anticipating. Now, hmm. The fact that your dial predates your back is very interesting. I don't know how to square that properly. So you can see you have a 6D, that's December 76, and you have a 72, which is February of 77. Generally with Seikos, and Seikos of this, this era, they were a month apart. And if it was a service dial, it would come after the date on the back of the watch. So that is a mystery. I'm not sure what how to square that um, because it's generally not seen that your dial predates your case back by what is effectively two or three months. Now that may be just a quirk of this particular watch. Um, that's interesting. Okay, well they're close, it's just not anticipated. Maybe you have a somewhat unique situation here, which is cool, but just unexpected. Okay, anyway, that's fine. Let's keep going. Go ahead and remove your balance, get that isolated. Get your dye shock out and get that nice and lubricated and cleaned. go. Okay, 
Very nice. Okay. Let's get the. Oh. Wow. All right. So, uh, your top bridge that controls your um, chronograph set is very loose. These screws are. I can probably turn them with some of this rubber rotico. Wow. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, somebody has, at some point, come in this watch, come into the watch, and started to loosen things up in a way that is oftentimes um, indicative of not really knowing what to do. This watch doesn't look like it's had a lot of wear or use. All the components look very good so far. Um, we've got some hairs and things. That can lead to big problems. Things like that inside your watch. I don't know if you can see that on the back of my finger there. But that little baby, if that got into your hairspring, that would be a problem. Or wrapped around one of your other pivots, that can lead to issues. Okay, so it's gone now. It will be gone as we go. There's your 12 minute wheel. And it's also got hairs on it. But it's staked, which is good. Oftentimes those uh, come apart on this movement, which is good to see that that's still in place and intact. We'll check it very closely to make sure that it's got long-term stability. Take off your springs. Take off your hammer. We gotta inspect these edges. They look pretty good. Those, that, what, that's what does your reset for your chronograph. Some old grease here on your winding. Winding wheel. Okay, let's take your levers off. They're nice and tight. Okay. Looking good.
two jewels there. And take your column wheel. Ooh. Got some lubrication leaking out of your barrel. We'll check that. The nice thing is we don't have to worry about your barrel port and your arbors um, because they've been jeweled on this movement. Okay. Very nice. Just gonna take your stem out. Now just check these screws on your main plate. Ooh, also, ooh, super loose. Man. That is interesting. more hair. I want to take a quick look at your case back and see if this was serviced recently. Are there any markings? I don't see any. Nothing obvious anyway. Okay. Just keep going. No use. Thinking about the past, look towards the future. Okay, you got some some gummy stuff here. That's okay. We can clean that for sure. And let really me take a close look at your bushing here. And here is the most important component in this watch. Right here. Your all important fourth wheel chronograph wheel. Just gonna check it, yep, nice good resistance out of that. That looks really good. Without that, you have nothing, no chronograph. Replacements are costly. Okay, it's good to see that in fine working order. Fork jewels. Sorry about that. Mm. Looks okay. Mm. That's some wear on them. I'll have to take another close look at that as we get things back together. Hopefully that's not a major thing to think about. The third wheel. Escape wheel. There's your barrel. And there's your gear that has to be there for running your 12 hour side. Take a close look at that. And now, 
the ever important fourth wheel or center wheel. Oh, you still have your can pinion on the other side. I have to take that off. Here's your split pinion for your winding and your winding gear. Make sure that goes back on. Looks to be in pretty good shape. Sometimes these things can get tight and then their teeth get knocked off. So take a really good look at that guy. Okay. All right, time to flip over. Do your calendar side. Here, draw down your dial screws a little bit. Make sure they don't come out in the wash. Okay. Alrighty. This is where we separate this watch from the other styles of. Chronographs produced by Seiko. These have their very distinct second plate on the calendar side, the 12 hour. Make sure we get this fitted in this movement holder without any problems. In fact, I'm going to try this one just for. I got a new one, I figured I might as well give it a shot. Yep, that works. Okay. Okay, here we go. Take off your secret. important piece. Take off your day ring. Mm -hmm. Okay, calendar size looking good. Hour recording.
है Star. All right, now these three screws, which are unique to this watch and Belmatics in terms of their head shape, uh, those have to come off. But we can get down to the other side here. Look like they're factory tight. That one is not so tight. That one is very tight. So strange how these things are put together sometimes or have been taken apart and put together. Alright, so very gently lift this off. Looks good. Okay, so here we are. Right. Centric seems a little off. Take a close look. All right. Good. Good, good, good. Everybody looks nice up here. 12 hour wheel. There's reset lever. Okay, I want to be right on top of this as I take this apart. Hey Luke, uh, while I'm cleaning your other parts, I generally jump into some of the case details. Um, and I, I just wanted to bring up a few things uh, about your crystal and some of your surfaces here. Um, your crystal was pretty well shattered, as you know. Um, I don't think any of it really went into the watch per se. I couldn't find any. There's some small shards here, but um, I, I oftentimes return uh, old gross crystals. Uh, but this one just because it's so darn nasty and sharp, I think I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, dispose of it here. Um, that way you don't have to worry about it. Um, uh, another little thing, just some details on your case. Um, these parts of the case are plated and some of your plating is starting to, starting to come off. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and get rid of some of this um, material and, and a little bit of, of pitting and rust. Uh, that started here. As you can see, there's a, just a little bit of surface uh, stuff here. But your sealing surface around your crystal seal is very good, so that's good, and your seal is in great shape. Um, and Seiko always recommends just to go ahead and reuse those. Um, your bezel ring, like I said, took quite a hit. Um, enough, in fact, to give it a little bit of a warp right here at the at the bottom. Um, I'm not going to do anything about that. Um, I fear that if we try and uh, get this insert straightened out at all, just touching it at all, we might chip off uh, more of this brown. Um, you can see some of it's actually from the inside of the, the ring is right here, this little bit of brown right here. 
and you're missing just the ever so slightest bit right where the gra glass sort of cracked that. Um, but that is a um, like a, a you know metal layer that's put on top here, and I don't want to mess with it at all. I'm just going to leave it alone, and we're going to just put it right back on the way it came off. So to preserve the uh, the integrity of that, everything else, um, your parts are are cleaned. Coming out of the cleaner now, so I'm going to go ahead and take care of your case details, put your new crystal in, make sure everything looks great. Okay. Hey Luke, just wanted to keep you up to date on progress. Um, right now, I'm I'm sort of going through systematically and testing the different components. Uh, looking at them very closely, um, I want to make sure that the whatever cracked or crystal doesn't translate into the components of the watch. And so part of that, um, just to explain this, this is not your main plate, this is a spare that I have, but it allows me to mount your balance, uh, which has the most sensitive components, and that's why it has these shock jewels in it, to make sure that any shocks that go into the watch get sort of taken up by these springs that uh, that hold these jewels in place, but even with that, um, these can get um, these very very small pivots, the posts that actually stick out of these um, these rotating wheels. They can get bent very easily, and that usually shows up as a uh, type of um, wobble in, say, for example, your balance. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just while there's not anything attached here to your balance, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a kick it's in joules so it should rotate fairly freely now I want to watch to make sure that your balance runs free runs easy there we go that looks pretty good I also want to check your hairspring to make sure that it's nice and flat. It's got some cupping. I'm gonna have to take care of that a little bit. Um, but that shouldn't be a big deal. Hopefully that'll be very easy to handle. Okay, so things are progressing. Okay, making progress on the reconstruction of your movement here. I've got all your uh, train wheels in place and now we get to put the uh, main bridge back on. I had to adjust a few of your jewels to make everything uh, conform really well, um, but I think I think overall we're in very good shape. Your mainspring was in great shape, uh, so that's a plus for sure. That saves you quite a, quite a bit there on new parts. Uh, so overall things are coming together really well. all the components are nicely seated here. We are um, doing pretty well here. I've gotten your movement 90% back together. Um, calendar side components aren't on yet and uh, and your automatic winding. Uh, but this is where I like to test the uh, test the movement to make sure that everything's working just the way we want it. And I think we're there. Um, Right now your chronograph is engaged, so you should be seeing some movement in your chronograph. It just flipped over um, the minute counting wheel, and you can see here this little finger, let me zoom in so you can see a little bit better. This little finger right here, when that does uh, a loop, what it does is it engages with this wheel, which then engages with this wheel, and advances you one minute. And so what you'll see is that within this little window right here, let's see if I can get something slightly sharper than a piece of wood, in this window right here, you're gonna see this finger appear and then advance this intermediate wheel to advance your minute. And that's a, that's a very important component to watch for to make sure that your chronograph is, uh, is functioning properly. And if we give it a couple more seconds, just like that, there it is. Okay, we're going to check the numbers uh, on your movement and let this run in overnight and come back to it tomorrow and see where we are. So for a movement that just started running, 
I don't think we can ask for any better than that. We got a little bit of beat error uh, at the moment, but overall, uh, to begin with in the 220s, um, after just just getting the balance going with, I mean, this is, this is really quite good. So I'm very happy with this. Uh, I'm gonna let this run, let all the lubricants sort of move around and do what they need to do. Um, adjust that bead error just a tiny bit, but this is, uh, this is stellar. This is exactly where you wanna be. I was a little bit nervous simply because I thought the, the watch had taken a bit of a hit and sometimes that can wreak havoc with, uh, with things uh, in the movement. But overall, um, it looks like things are really clean and, and just running in perfectly. Um, this, is, this is about as good as you wanna see uh, after the first few minutes of running. And um, yeah, we'll get back to it tomorrow. Hey Luke, just wanted to keep you updated on progress. I've been doing some sort of tests on your watch to make sure that everything's running as it should be and, and things look really good. Um, your numbers uh, continue to impress, so we are gonna push forward. Um, just want to give you an update. Here's your new uh, new crystal. Looks really good. Um, that went in no problem. I was a little afraid of of what might be going on down here, but it doesn't look like we did any anything beyond what's what's already there. Um, so uh, everything is fine on your case. So let's get your calendar side put together. clip which has to go on in one direction so that the next time this is serviced the person can get it off and have a bevel that goes downward instead of upward which is sort of counter to the way we usually think about how beveled objects are mounted but that's so you can get something underneath with that edge take that off okay let's check your quick set works just fine and your normal set all right here we go round and round and round here comes your day change and boom and now your date day of the week Perfect. Good. Everything seems very good on the dial side. Okay. Now we get to put your dial back on. Okay, Luke. We are nearing the end here. Your watch is uh, just about ready to come back to you. So I'm going to go ahead and get this put back in the case here. Um, while we're mentioning it, uh, here's your broken uh, rusty spring. I have a uh, basically a new old stock Seiko spring that I'm going to put in there for you um, to make sure that everything functions as it should. Get your stem out here. the last component put in place. Make sure your movement here is nice and clean. All final pieces in place. Okay. Everything looks good. Let's get your winding weight back on. Final 
that screw. the end of this process which has been really quite a pleasure this is such a great watch to work on I really enjoy it I hope you are happy thank you for allowing me to do it I really appreciate it um, let's just do a last little review here of things Everything came out really great. Um, your dial uh, is just spectacular. Uh, you got great loom. I think your hands have been reloomed or perhaps painted at some point in time. I looked at the back side of them and they have uh, they have some paint uh, across the loom, um, but that's okay. Uh, they look really great. Um, you have really good. Um, sub sub dials uh, everything looks great I like the I like the way that you know everything just cleaned up beautifully um, I didn't do any real polish to your case I didn't want to disturb it um, so you're gonna get it back clean but not polished um, you know your bezel went on just fine no problems there especially I was concerned with this bottom edge as I said before um, your chronograph uh, you know starts and stops and resets just fine. What I would say is the following. These chronographs are approaching 50 years old and the one thing that I would re always recommend is that it's not a point of turning it on or off or using it or, or not using it. It's where you want to reset the chronograph. This is a hard reset and the furthest point of course from vertical is, is down here. In the lower half of the watch, the reset process is putting a lot of strain on that chronograph wheel. And you don't want that. You want to be as gentle on that wheel as possible. It'll extend the life of your watch. It'll, it'll just make things better. Um, so what I would always recommend is that if you are going to run your chronograph and you are going to reset it, allow it to get to within a few seconds of the peak hit it stop there, and then reset from that position. That puts the least amount of stress on your chronograph system. So that's my ultimate recommendation. Um, enjoy your watch. I hope you like it. It's a really great example. I, uh, I have one too. <laughs> I think they're fantastic. Um, so, you know, wear it, enjoy it, and thank you again. Okay, take care.